We have snuck into the, uh, maybe not the largest office, I don't know. Is it the largest office? I think it is the largest office, yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably the largest office because it's the office that belongs to David here. Uh, the, um, is it managing director? Managing director. Managing, yes, managing director of Ubisoft Massive here in Malmö, Sweden, uh, working on Far Cry 3 at the moment and something secret. But uh, I thought I'd ask you, because for, for a lot of gamers out there, you know, Massive is all about RTSs, and you did your own RTSs for a long time, but now you sort of come into sort of a supporting role in the Ubisoft family. Uh, could you t talk us a little bit through the, the transition that you've gone through and what, you, what you've been working on? Because it's, it's, uh, I think people are surprised to know that you've been growing all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's a pretty long and pretty dramatic story. Uh, I think we were almost about to disappear entirely uh, a couple of years after World in Conflict. Uh, so it was hanging on uh, a very, very thin thread for a while. Uh, but we met Ubisoft and we uh, found that we had like a soulmate with them. The, it's a company that really, really likes innovation and uh, very open-minded, I think, when it comes to uh, who does what and uh, what's the best game. Um, and I, I think we had also reached uh, a kind of an unfortunate situ situation with the RTS games, where RTS games are so tightly connected to PC as a platform. And as we know, piracy is a problem on PC. And while almost all other genres have been able to make a transition over to other platforms, RTS is still really, really tightly connected to uh, PC. So it's been uh, very, very difficult for not just for us, but for uh, everybody else who's been in the RTS genre. Uh, and you probably saw the news about uh, yeah. Relic. So uh, it was a bit of a dead end, actually. And of course, being in the game industry, we have a lot of people who love all sorts of games. We play everything. It can be a DS game, it's Pokemon, it's RTS, it's shooters, absolutely everything. And when we were talking to publishers at that time, it was uh, most of the traditional publishers, and I'm not counting Ubisoft as a traditional publisher, um, cast us in an RTS only role. So we talked to them and they said, oh, you guys are great, we like working with you, but unfortunately you can only do RTS games. And as we know, that's not a viable uh, market right now. And we tried to say, you know, we can do more than RTS. You don't need to worry too much about that. But it's a kind of a, a very boxed uh, way of looking at developers, which I don't think is true for us. And I don't think it's true for uh, other developers either. But anyway, you get typecast. And then when we started talking with Ubisoft, they were much more open minded. And they thought, well, you know, you're passionate about making high quality games. That's what matters. And we think that there are other things that you can do uh, besides RTS games. So that's how that story kind of unfolded. <coughs> and in fact, the unannounced project that we're working on is the largest one. Mm. And it's also a project where we are not in a supporting role at all. It's a massive project. I can't talk any, uh, <laughs> say anything more about it. Um, but in the meantime, we also had a couple of ideas and a couple of opportunities. And they had some needs uh, where the, we were able to make a pretty interesting fit. So the stuff we did for Assassins was uh, really uh, a massive hobby project from the beginning that didn't have uh, a real home. And they saw an opportunity to add that into the Assassins franchise. So we don't actually feel that we were uh, supporting them so much or asked to help. It was more a question of, hey, we have this thing that we like. Uh, wh what do we do with it? And there were other opportunities, but in the end it was decided that the best place for that could be Assassin's Creed. Far Cry is different because for Far Cry, we, as you know, with World in Conflict, we had a lot of awards and a very, very good reputation for multiplayer. And they needed to get Far Cry 3 into a place where multiplayer was fantastic. And they said, hey guys, uh, we know you have this history. Would you like to try this? And we've been really hungry to try out a, a shooter for a long time. So it seemed like a, a nice way for us to test that uh, with some protection also from uh, Montreal. And, and also you're, you're involved in, in the whole you play uh, thing as well. So it's, it's a natural fit for you guys to sort of work on, on that sort of thing. It, how, how much work do, do you do like under, under the radar with other Ubisoft studios? And, and is there a lot of collaboration going on, except for like when you're doing a, a, an entire mode like this? Of course there is, but you know, in, in other terms, in more or less formal yeah, situations as well? It, it depends a lot. Ubisoft is a company that likes sharing. Uh, and they really believe that you can gain a lot of uh, new inspiration from working with people in other studios. So under the hood or under their radar, there's a lot of exchange going on and a lot of technology ch uh, sharing. 
which is really fascinating to us because we before we were all almost only entirely on our own and everything that we knew was part of uh, the our own innovations but now we have like access to this giant ocean of uh, studios and really really smart people uh, so so it's quite different but i do think we're not doing anything uh, particularly secret apart from the unannounced project i mean we're working with uplay but we're doing that with the other studios uh, our part is uplay pc which we're developing with the guys in kiev so there's not a lot of you know under the radar uh, stuff going on there and Far Cry is us and Montreal and Shanghai, which I think is known. So there's, again, nothing particularly uh, under the radar going on apart from that. Mm. So, um, but obviously working on, on Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, that's mm -hmm. pretty much the, the top of top franchises that Ubisoft have, like perhaps except for Just Dance, which is perhaps the biggest one they yeah. got. But, but um, sort of, uh, how is the hero? You're telling me we need to do a Just Dance project. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, th I think you have a talented music uh, <laughs> guys, <laughs> right? C correct. We have Ulla Strand, one of the best uh, composers of the industry. So yeah, maybe we should try that too. <laughs> but I think all, all the tracks are licensed. I don't think they want... You, well, uh, well, maybe we, you can do some sort of classical Just Dance thing. Well, we'll, 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 we'll take a look. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But uh, but how do you see uh, Massive's role in the future? Do you f do you feel that you're gonna sort of do both this support role and and sort of be the star yourselves, or, or where do you where do you see Massive fit into the the, the bigger picture? Uh, good question. I, I think that our main um, driver is not uh, having an exclusive access to a brand. Our main driver is high quality games, and we like. Uh, we're a bit traditional, so we like big blockbuster games. Uh, we want to work on those projects. So it has to be about passion, it has to be about quality, it, we like blockbusters. So I, I think if those components are there, uh, it's not terribly important for us if it's something that we're sharing with somebody else, or if it's entirely our own. Then for practical reasons it's easier if you have autonomy on a project. But it also gives you, there's a risk of a more narrow perspective when you put yourself in that position. So I, I think we need to find a balance, but maybe uh, maybe the, it's like this, that we're being coached into a more autonomous role. Mm. But if you've never done a shooter before, you've never worked on consoles before, it's a, a really, really good uh, opportunity to do multiplayer uh, and you learn from the inside. Uh, we master the techniques, we master the technologies, we master the relationships with console uh, makers and so on. So I, I think there's a kind of a common uh, hope uh, from both our side and Ubisoft that this is uh, a phase uh, where we graduate into getting uh, full autonomy on the projects. Because mm. uh, you, you talk about blockbusters and that sort of thing, because I think a lot of developers these days, they they like to do a little bit smaller projects in between. Sometimes you get you get to do a project where it's 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 a little bit limited, and you you can finish it in a year or so because it's it, it wears, wears on you to to work on a game for four years and then you know maybe it comes out you know that that sort of thing. Is it is it is it a good compromise to do that when you don't want to work on say a downloadable title instead to do a support thing and where you yes work on something small. Actually, they're not easier or shorter. So it's not it's not like uh, taking a break. Um, in, in and can you, can you expand a little on that list? How, how big an undertaking is the, the multiplayer in Far Cry, for instance? Uh, this is a project we started on right when we were uh, acquired. Mm. So uh, very early 2010. Mm. Uh, we didn't have uh, 80 or 90 people on it back then. But it's a very long project. And uh, the fact that you're collaborating adds complexity. It doesn't make it easier or kind of like a, you know, let's throw in one of those in between just for fun. Uh, in fact, it's more complicated to, to collaborate. But the uh, purpose of that is that the end result gets better because you get more challenged along the way and you have a broader horizon of ideas uh, when you're developing. So in the end, uh, it's well worth it. But uh, um, I think that we have a lot of people here who have been in the industry now for over 15 years. And there is a kind of a um, growing need for short and sweet projects you know something light i want to do an app or i want to try something nintendo or similar so there is a, a probably i think among some of the developers uh, a kind of a development fatigue that if you've been working on giant blockbuster projects for 15 years in a row it looks pretty sweet to make an app for a couple of months so probably but uh, it's not really what we're good at we're good at big projects so we're trying to find the right balance there for the right people 
All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. You think you can hurt me? You think that hits? Smash your speed the fuck! Are you even trying? You've got to answer your questions. Send him right. Crazy fucking tired.